Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have a similar example as the problem with it before, with the difference is that the top block can now also move. Notice that the two blocks are connected through a pulley system, and so the minimum force required now is required to make both blocks move, not just the one at the bottom. It turns out that to move the one in the bottom will take the exact same amount of forces in the previous example, and you'll see in just a moment why. First of all, let's determine the normal force between the floor and the first block here and the top of the first block and the bottom of the second block. So we have the normal force right here. Let's call this N1. And we have the normal force here. Let's call this N2. The normal force N1 is simply going to be the weight of both blocks. Both blocks are pushing down on the surface, so the surface is pushing back. So this will be 300 pounds plus 200 pounds which is the total of 500 pounds. The normal force between the top block and the, the bottom block, that's simply gonna be the force pushing back against the weight of the top block, so it's going to be 200 pounds. Now, if we only look at the bottom block and try to figure out the force required to make that one move, notice you'll have to find the friction between the floor and the block and the friction between this block and that block. Both friction forces are going to be pulling in the opposite direction of the intended motion. So let's call this force friction one, and let's call this friction here force friction two. And by definition, we know that the friction force, and let's use force friction one, is equal to the normal force, normal one, times the coefficient of static friction. So in this case, again, this will be 500 pounds, times 0 0.4, which is 200 pounds required to overcome the friction between this block and the surface. The force friction 2 is equal to N2 times mu sub s, which is 200 pounds times 0 0.4, which is 80 pounds. Together, you'll need 280 pounds of force to make the bottom block move but you also need additional force to make the top block move because it is sliding to the left as the bottom block is sliding to the right and it's going to be held back by the friction between these two blocks. Now, interestingly enough, that friction force will be directed in the opposite direction. So this is force friction three is going to be equal to the normal force, in this case, normal force two, because it's the normal force of the surface of the bottom block pushing back against the bottom of the second block, so it's N2, times the coefficient of friction, which of course will be the same, mu sub s. Now you may wonder, well, why is this friction force in this direction? Well, the reason is because this block is sliding to the left, and the direction of the friction force is always in the opposite direction to the motion of the object if friction force wasn't there. Without friction, this block would readily slide to the left, and therefore the friction will be acting towards the right in the opposite direction. So in this case, that will be equal to 200 pounds times mu sub s, which is 0 0.4, that makes 80 pounds which means you need an additional 80 pounds to also move the top block. So we need 280 pounds to move the bottom block, we need 80 pounds to move the top block, so therefore F minimum, the minimum force required, will be the sum of all those friction forces, it will be friction force 1 plus friction force 2 plus friction force 3, and that's equal to 200 pounds plus 80 pounds, oops, that's 80 pounds, plus 80 pounds, or 360 pounds of force required to get all three blocks to move. So that's the minimum force required. At that point, you'll have pending motion. Any additional force, the whole system will begin to move. And that's how it's done. 